Good evening. This is Flo Smith. I'm the vice chair for the Berlin Select Board. I'm going to call tonight's regularly scheduled meeting to order. It's about 6.15. We're starting a little later. We had some technical difficulties. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Tour Nelson, also board member and interim town administrator is with us, as is Joe Staub. I'm not seeing that David Sawyer is with us tonight. So this is the folks that will be at tonight's board meeting from the board. Um, we also have people who are on the computer with us tonight through Zoom, and uh, Diane Isabel is here, other staff from the town, and Mr. I hope I pronounce your last name correctly, Dinchico. That's correct. Wonderful. Is here with us from Browns Mill Court, and also Mr. William Driscoll is on Zoom with us in terms of Town Highway 74. We just did site visits at both locations, and we'll be discussing that within the public hearings during the select board meeting tonight. Any additions or changes to the agenda tour? Do have two. Um, one is discussion with the police department on highway and Burlington communications about issues with the radio system and also energy improvements to the uh, garage. Okay. Just gonna drop that down. Thank you. So what we'll do is we'll open up right now for the public hearing regarding the possible reclassifications of the Browns Mill Extension, Town Highway 17. And basically we did at a little after five o'clock tonight have that um, site visit, which was an extension of a site visit we did previously. And that was also discussed at, the, at, a, at a prior select board meeting that we had here on June 5th. And Mr. Dincheco is here with us this evening. And what we discussed at the site visit tonight was how it could be plowed consistent in a way to how we've been plowing it. And Tim Davis, our highway superintendent, is here with us tonight who can also discuss that. And we'll open it up for discussion and comment. Mr. Dincheco, would you like to start in terms of your thoughts and what you'd like to see? Sure. Wonderful. Um, Yep, again, my name is Mark Checo. I am a resident at 56 Brownsville Road Extension, which is a very tiny <laughs> uh, geographic location in the town of Berlin. Um, so uh, as far as I know, the town has been plowing this little hill that leads up to my property line for a very long time, decades. Um, and this notice arrived um, the first one I got was in June of this year, and uh, signifying that the town was looking at reclassifying the road. And um, I, did sh I did attend a meeting shortly after that at this office um, and argued for uh, consideration to continue plowing it, um, not reclassifying the road. Uh, a couple of reasons, primary reasons, which I covered at the site visit tonight. Um, I need to have ingress uh, and egress from the property um, it's very, very helpful to me that the town is able to plow and also uh, salt and or sand the road there mm -hmm. um, so that when I'm coming down, I don't uh, fly into the river. <laughs> it's icy. Uh, that's very helpful to me. Uh, but more than that, it creates, um, it provides availability for uh, my trash hauling service, Casella, to be able to back up the little hill. I have to have a place that's flat uh, for the barrels to be located so they back up that hill by plowing, uh, that space is created so that they can do that. And then my mailbox for US mail delivery is also on the right side of that um, extension as you're going up to my property line. And by plowing, that creates um, the space for the US mail carrier to bring mail to my box. Um, in addition to that, I also um, work for Green Mountain Power. And as part of my duties there, I do have to get called out um, especially during bad weather, just like the folks who are driving the plows. Um, and it's extremely helpful and beneficial to me to be able to uh, get out onto the road uh, without having to uh, try to get someone to plow at various hours. The town's very good about keeping the roads open um, at various hours, and so I'm able to avail myself of that. Um, and then finally, the um, the dilemma that I have is if the town uh, is unable to plow that uh, 40 or 50 foot section uh, of 
the extension, it means I have to uh, find a way to plow out in the house towards a bridge that's located there. And in doing that, um, there's no clear location to push the snow. I'd be pushing the snow onto town land um, or towards the bridge itself or onto my neighbor's driveway and there's no good place to put it. So um, it has served me very well that uh, the town is able to push the road snow up the hill and off to the side and it drains down into the river um, and everything is great. So um, this, uh, a lot of why we're here today is probably my fault because uh, beginning back in a uh, storm in November of last year, uh, the ground was soft, and so in, in addition to the snow, a lot of rocks and boulders and road surface and stuff uh, came up and completely blocked uh, my ability to get out. It was, it was quite a chore to remove it. You can imagine a big truck uh, depositing this stuff. I had no easy way uh, to remove it. Um, and so I did write to the town and ask, is there a way we can do this in the future? Is there anything I can do to assist with this um, to make it easier? And um, I regret it happened again <laughs> uh, later in the winter. And I wrote this time uh, to Mr. Davis and to uh, the town administrator. I copied and he got back to me and indicated he would look into it. Um, he did get back to me, and the next time uh, it snowed heavily. Uh, no plowing was done at all in that area. So I inquired again. I said, you know, is there a problem? Is there something I can do to help here? Um, and the next time uh, the guys came through the plow, uh, they plowed it and plowed it up to where they normally dump it. And it stayed that way for the rest of the winter. I was happy with the resolution to that and uh, somewhat surprised. The re reclassification letter showed up in my, in my mailbox that summer. So my goal here tonight is to try to convince you all to continue plowing that as it's very helpful to me. And uh, I would probably incur uh, a lot of extra work and cost to try to uh, deal with that little section of the road um, myself um, in a timely manner when I get out. So it would also be difficult for people to get my mail to me um, my trash room. So I mean, that's it in a nutshell. It's not a very complicated issue. It's just about 40 or 50 feet of road that should be plowed or should not be plowed. And I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. It's enabled us to go, to see, to talk with you, to discuss everything you just described. Also to have Tim there and to be able to brainstorm what can be done in terms of whether to continue plowing it, like you said, or to reclassify the road. So I'd like to have Tim um, give his viewpoint and then see if we can make a determination in terms of which way we go forward tonight. Uh, you know I mean? it, it is a hassle to plow such a short section of road with such a big truck. Um, unfortunately, the, the sand and the dirt and the stuff does happen to, you know I mean, especially in the fall and spring. You know, those plows are heavy. It's, it's uh, it does dig in every once in a while. The the snow and the dirt are not purposely left in those places. I, I'm not the one that plows it, so I, I mean there might have been a reason why it had happened that one or two times. Um, I mean, it's gonna need some. I've noticed from just being down there this summer that it's going to need some brush cutting if we continue to plow it. The, the canopy is encroached into that road quite a bit as far as like knocking mirrors and breaking mirrors and stuff like that. But, um, if you guys choose to not reclassify it, then we will work with Mark and uh, see if we can kind of mutual agreement on how things go, but you know, that's, that's helpful. Uh, that's helpful. It's up to you guys whether you want to reclassify the end of this driveway or, or leave it the way it is. And then, like I said, if you choose not to, then 
I will do my due diligence to work with him and uh, try to make all parties happy. Thank you. Thank you both. Would you like to entertain a motion or would you like to put this on the next agenda when more board members are present? Well, I think uh, continue with Town Highway 74 and close the hearing, so then we can discuss and it. And then we can discuss yeah. it from there. Okay, very good. So we will end the discussion at this point in terms of Browns Mill Road extension, and we will move now on to Town High, Highway 74. <clears throat> and Mr. Driscoll, can you hear us okay? I can, thank you. Wonderful. So we did a site visit with Mr. Driscoll this evening after Browns Mill Extension, and we went over um, his views, and I'd like to open it up now for you to express your views and concerns, Mr. Driscoll. Sure, thanks very much. It was thank great. you. Good to see you folks earlier today. Um, I think the primary concern I have, which is really more of a question first uh, I discussed with you is, I don't know. I haven't had an opportunity to review, which I, I believe is going to be in the in the paper records in in the town. Um, how, if if at all, um, my right of way is addressed in the in the in the land records, and given the range of options you have in terms of any possible changes to the status of the highway there, if there would be any impact on that and. I, I would hope and think that there probably wouldn't be a, an issue there, but it would be good to know what the what if any impact there might be depending on what path you might consider um, before you make a final decision. I have an opportunity to address that too. Um, that's the primary thing uh, with regard to you know the the crux of the issue in terms of snow maintenance. Um, you know, obviously. You know, I'm I'm the only one who uses that that stretch of highway, so I certainly acknowledge that. Um, it is certainly a benefit um, if I am away and coming back, and there's been a heavy snow that I have at least the opportunity to pull off of the road uh, before addressing everything else in the driveway there above, um, rather than having to park uh, at the entrance to Browns Mill Road. Um, but I also, you know, certainly would acknowledge that that's the same kind of issue that my neighbors face. Um, you know, because they don't, they have a, their driveway is right there on this same stretch of road as well. So um, I'm not trying, so I wouldn't want to raise it as a, as a huge critical issue, but that's certainly one factor uh, for myself. Um, I was trying to think, I don't think that um, if, if the town does not plow that stretch there, that that will necessarily require I go back and forth over the railroad more. There's always usually a little bit left there that I have to do that anyway. Um, so it's really more uh, in terms of any sort of safety issue is what what I have to do if I'm coming back to a to a to a block driveway. Um, uh, you know that um, that's the only thing I think I would raise for that consideration as far as that goes. Obviously, it's more work to to clear that myself, um, but that's not necessarily a significant issue. Uh, the only other issue which occurred to me after your visit um, is, uh, you know, there are some trees along, uh, especially the south side of that stretch, which are a potential hazard. I'm not sure if there are any left that are a hazard to Route 12. I think those have, those may have been taken care of, but there's certainly one um, that's a hazard to fall over. Uh, Town Highway 74, and there's others nearby that might have issues with the power lines there. I don't know what the extent of the highway is in terms of what is um, currently town property or town responsibilities with regard to dealing with those trees. Um, again, I think it might be an issue of, of at least knowing what, knowing what, if anything, would happen with an alternative status um, that could affect um, you know who's responsible for those those trees or or dealing with that. That again, it's it, it may be mostly just knowing rather than that being a huge issue in in your decision. But um, I think it would just be good to know. Um, so just to sum up, really, um, you know, I, I certainly understand and appreciate the safety uh, issues that Tim raised. Um, you know, and I don't know if there's a history of incidents or close calls along that stretch of road 
you know, in the past that, that, uh, you know, that the work that's we're trying to address, but, um, you know, I appreciate those, those concerns. Um, so my, I guess my primary request is not necessarily to strongly object or anything at this point is if we can get an answer to the right of way question um, and maybe some of the other sort of um, responsibility consequences of, you know, who's responsible for what, depending on what alternative you might consider going with. Um, I'd appreciate that just so that we know um, what those are and if they, if, if, if those create an issue. And we appreciate you too. Thank you for describing that. And Tim, can you also speak to those trees? Are you familiar with the trees that Mr. Driscoll is yeah, speaking of? I mean, the, there's a, Are you tired? there's like an old foundation in those trees. They're like down inside it and everything else. So I don't even, I don't know what was ever there. They're borderline whether they are in the right of way or not, depending on what the right of way is on that particular road. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like the reclassification, if it gets reclassified to a class four, then there's no right of way issues. It's no different than any of the other roads. It's just the lack of the winter maintenance. Um, and then, I mean, if you if you turn that to a class four road today. And that tree fell tomorrow. You know, we'd go clean it up. Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd remove it from the class four section of our highway. Um, you know, uh, I don't. It would have to be like, you know, it's not something we'd go cut, especially if it's anywhere near a power line, without having to either hire somebody to do it, or you know, I mean, it'd have to be taken down by a bucket truck. Dead to be climbed, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff like that. I mean, there's dead trees all over the road system. It's usually just if they fall down, they go clean them up. Mm -hmm. So, as far as that tree goes, thank you. And some of the things we discussed tonight with Mr. Driscoll when we were there on the site visit was the speed of the traffic through there. Um, we were looking at the safety element, as you described, Mr. Driscoll, and also that there will be paving next year of Route 12 from, you know, near Northfield to Montpelier. And that could also increase the speed of the traffic as well, which would factor into the concerns for safety. Um, we discussed how many times with Tim that the road would be plowed. And Tim explained to us that it's the same number wherever he plows for whatever roads for he and his staff, which was good to know as well. And so ultimately the decision is whether to reclassify or continue as is, taking into consideration the safety factor. Yes, and, and I would recognize, again, as I think those seem very legitimate issues to consider. Um, I don't know if it necessarily changes changes anything, in, in the, but it, I was curious if, you know, obviously the, the road's been paved many times over the years. I didn't know if there's that there's a history of, of, of that increasing the risk or, or incidents um, there or not. Um, but I only just raise that as a, as a question. I, mm -hmm. I think regardless of whether there have or haven't, I can certainly um, appreciate the, the concerns, you know, on a, on a basic level. Mm -hmm. And ultimately we just want there to be safety. So it mm -hmm. was really good to come out and be able to meet with you and hear your views and for you to be here tonight as well. And I basically open it up for discussion and thoughts from anyone at this point in terms of what we're discussing for Town Highway 74. Any comments or concerns from anyone? Well, I guess my well, concern is um, if we don't reclassify it, how do we improve the safety of the snow plows backing out onto the onto the highway. And I have that same concern. Well, so what I think my concern would be, um, we're buying bigger trucks, right? And we have all these other, these small little roads, and now our trucks are just getting larger and larger, whatever. Um, I think it's, I think it's how we, our process. 
we're plowing with the same truck that we plow any of the other roads where we have, we do have a pickup, we do have loaders to push back banks. Maybe you're using a different vehicle. You know, how many, because our trucks are bigger, how many other small roads are we gonna to toss up? That would be a question. And if we were to toss them up, do they currently? But even even if we had a pickup, they'd still have to be backing up onto the highway. Not necessarily. And if you're, wouldn't if, be as large as if you're pulling truck. in, you pull in much like a pull off, like a parking area, and then you reset yourself, and you can still be off the road. I mean, I did it for eighteen years for the state. Um, and that's all state highway. Everything's 50 plus miles an hour. I realize that the, the corners there, um, people are driving excessive, even at the right, even at the posted speed limit. Um, there could be a safety concern, sure. I think we just change our process and how we, we plow our roads, or maybe the equipment we use to plow our roads. Um, and, and again, I guess if you're going to plow all the roads with the big trucks and these are you're going to you're going to pick them up with something smaller well they're not going to be plowed at the same time it's a little later in the seat in the storm you know you you have that possibility um and these these roads if we were to reclassify them as class four they're currently class three right right they are do they meet class three standards Current. I would question of town highway seventy four does. And, and so, if if they are class three and we maintain them as class three mm -hmm. and then we turn them to a class four, then then I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I guess if that's the direction we're going to go, but if we have let them slip beyond what is our, our class three standard and just toss it up, then I, I don't know. I feel like we, we've done a misjust, uh, justice to the, the residents on those crap, on those roads. I see your point. Any other thoughts or concerns? Or Tim, do you want to speak to that? So, as far as like plow and pick up or adding whatever, that mean we're going to add staffing to run those trucks or extra means of plowing and then um, as far as town seven or as far as the 74 I mean, we just went through that <coughs> last summer uh, re-ditched it cleaned up all the debris on the sides turned the water off in it so it stopped washing out but there's only so much you can do there as far as maintenance wise, we re graveled it, but I mean, there's only one car or you know, I mean, there's one resident there. The grass grows back faster than anything, so that's why it looks like it's just a little two track because there's no traffic there to beat the grass back. Like that was all ditched and graveled. It's either last summer or the fall of before, but I want to say it was last summer. And that was mainly just trying to make it a little easier to plow because it was all burned up and from years of just plowing and pushing dirt around when it's soft because it doesn't get a lot of traffic so it doesn't freeze as hard as the rest of them. So, so to speak as far as the maintenance goes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Fired using a different piece of equipment to maintain small roads. My question would be to that are we going to add staff? Mm -hmm. So that could be or further discussion as we or move what's forward. What's that going to look like as far as what you guys want us to do? Mm -hmm. Are we going to take two vehicles down there? Because we're going to go plow down Brown's Mill Road with a dump truck and then. So am I going to go back down with the pickup and plow the two little side roads? Thank you. 
So is there any other discussion or comments before we close the public hearing and have open discussion? Okay, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and we will move on to the possible decision and findings on the reclassification of Browns Mill Road Extension and Town Highway 74. And I would ask whether board members present this evening would like to move forward with a motion on Browns Mill Road Extension or defer the discussion to the next board meeting when more board members are present. I guess theoretically, I would like to get the town out of plowing what are basically individual driveways. The, these both instances, they are servicing one, one house, one residence each, um, which I don't know is really the best use of our limited town resources. Um, but I don't know that I've really had the stomach to change the classification of either of them. I, I do very much acknowledge the safety concerns with Town Highway 74, um, and I don't have a solution to that. Um, I mean, if, if, if we were going to move ahead on reclassifying one, I would say that would be the one. Um, Browns Mill, I mean, I think <clears throat> right on, uh, there's a problem to be fixed there. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's kind of my philosophy on that. Um, and I also say that both residents have been so understanding and thorough and working with us so that we could understand what the concerns were. And, um, offering up suggestions to how it can be changed even without a reclassification per se so you know i concur with what tour just explained and your views views joe i think I, I don't think i'd be in favor of changing the classification of either one of those roads without maybe seeing a, a list of how many um how many town roads that are servicing um a small number of mm -hmm. residents. And, and I, how many of those are out there? I know a few. Mm -hmm. um, and, and are those going to be the next ones coming to the board? You know, um, so right now I wouldn't be in favor of reclassifying the road, either one of those roads. Shall we entertain a motion? I will make a motion that we do not reclassify Brown Snow Road Extension Town, Town Highway, Highway 17. 17. We keep it as a class three. Do I hear a second? On second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. And do I hear a motion for Town Highway 74? I'll make the motion to leave Town Highway 74 uh, classified as Class 3. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you all. Appreciate it. And now we'll move on to the treasurer's report. Uh, the was, uh, Madam Chair, um, we have Burlington Communications oh, here wonderful. with us tonight, Todd. Excellent. Uh, right, we have the evening. chief and the sergeant. Fabulous. And Let's move to that. So if we could talk about the radio issues. That's please. wonderful. So we'll move into the police department and discussion with Burlington <clears throat> Communications at the present time. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. So tour? Yes. All right. Nice to meet you. Yep. And Mark close and the chief. Yeah, and Tim's in the corner. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay. Um, so, well, Tor asked me to come down because I know you just had an incident that um, sounds like maybe more than one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first, I'd like to uh, listen, right, to you know hear what's going on, and then, um, 
you know, it's always been my guys that have come down, so I get everything secondhand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let's uh, uh, tell me. Um, I'll give you a summary of the problem. The sergeant could probably talk more intelligently about mm -hmm. radios. Mm -hmm. It's not really my strong point, um, but the handhelds, especially, are not working. Uh, really in any capacity. We can't communicate from like the mall to here. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're somewhere like on the other side of the hill, forget it. Um, mm -hmm. They appeared to be at least passable when we first kind of deployed them. But since then, over the, probably the last few months, they're, it's just not acceptable. Um, and given state police dispatch for us, and they really are and they just don't have the staff. They're really not tracking their whereabouts. It'd be one thing if we had a dedicated dispatcher that was kind of on top of things and mm -hmm. kind of knew where officer where she could just shift resources or send resources if something concerning came up. But basically, an officer's out there all by themselves with no ability to communicate um, if there's an issue. Um, the cruiser radios, I get the impression that they're at least functional. They're a little bit better mm -hmm. than the handhelds, but the handhelds are not. Sergeant, do you have anything to add to that? Um, is that accurate? Yeah, I, I, and I don't know if it's a tuning issue with the radios or if it's you know, a, a VSP mm -hmm. equipment issue, certainly. Um, but it's, it's yeah, I'll agree with, with Chief's you know, assessment that right. it's been getting worse mm -hmm. throughout the summer since we changed over and uh, places where we would be able to have decent communications before with our handhelds. We no longer are you know, we're having dispatch telling us that they can't hear us, we're all static. And so forth. Um, yep. And uh, as far as the uh, the repeater system goes, I mean that has never worked for us because it wasn't our primary channel, and there's no way for it to be our primary channel because yeah. dispatch does our state police state dispatch police. does not have the ability to access that frequency. So for us, that's yeah that that's not going to be uh, you know that repeater going up is not going to resolve our problems mm -hmm. um, at all. So. How, how are the cruiser radios in your opinion? Um, for the most part, I think that they're probably like about what we had before. So it's yeah. you know it's you yeah. know, it's just running back yeah. to analog. So it's yeah, uh, right. Um, I think that they're what yeah. we would have had with the with our old right. Radios. Yeah, it's not that you lost coverage with those. It's it's really uh, we're in. So with the coverage from like the mall to whether, you know, even when it's coming to here, it's still going through the state police network. So, um, so it's always on that state police channel, correct? That you're having, well, but that's what you're operating on. Yes, that's the yep. school around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. Um, so, uh, you know, so just, you know, the portables, uh, they are um, five watts, which is the most power you can get in a handheld. Okay, so that, that is... Um, what they are in. A lot of the older models were only four watts. Um, now, this particular model, one of the reasons, um, you know, it's a good radio. One of the reasons we went to it was because uh, one of the requirements was to also provide some interoperability between highway and police. Uh, and that's why the new repeater on Mount Irish, uh, which, is, um, which is also a digital repeater. Um, and, um, but so that, um, uh, it was uh, Vince that gave me the requirement of what he was trying to accomplish uh, and they didn't want to have to buy two separate repeaters like a new one for police and a, and, and a new one for highway uh, so the only way to do that is with digital and that's why um, you know so it's a single repeater up there uh, and it uh, you know it can allow two simultaneous conversations so highway can be talking at the exact same time as uh, in this case, police. I realize it's not your primary channel, uh, but it was more for if you guys didn't need to talk to each other and could hear each other, it's there. You, you actually now have a radio before you didn't. Now you actually have a radio that can kind of, you know, talk to each other. So, well, yeah. I, don't know, I guess there would be some yeah. question about whether that works or not, right? Yeah, yeah so I guess that's the other question. Your, um, My question is, did you know, the antenna ever get moved to the top of the tower? It is not. Um, so it, it's been scheduled a couple times and uh, weather um, kind of washed us out. And then um, the road was completely impassable for uh, several weeks um, uh, after the heavy rains. And it was scheduled during that time, which didn't do us any good. Uh, so we're trying to get it back on the schedule. 
Uh, we're short staffed like everybody. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's obviously a priority now, but um, so uh, I did do, um, I did call state police uh, to ask them if they have any issues, but uh, they said on handhelds, uh, their troopers really aren't using handhelds um, on this channel. Uh, <clears throat> and that when they do, uh, they're on the highway, uh, they have um, vehicle repeaters in their cruisers, in their police cars. So uh, if, a, if a state trooper has to get out on the highway, he does a traffic stop, he can uh, switch to his, his vehicle repeater on and then it boosts his signal. So, um, you know, whereas you're relying on just the handheld radio. Uh, and same, I, I, there, so there really is no one else on that channel using portables to compare with to say, you know, are you having issues? So, um, uh, is Northfield still on that channel? Still be in their own frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and so, um, so, so I did do some coverage maps um, <clears throat> just to see uh, whether it would work. And uh, you know, the the coverage, the propagation maps show that actually in the mall it should not work anyways. Uh, so if it has been working, like it's, it must have always been scratchy, I would think, or marginal. Um, so it depends it's kind on where you were. And yeah, yeah. So it's kind of, um, mar you know, so it's marginal. So all it takes is for just something to be different on their system. Something might have degraded. Uh, everything affects it. You know, um, foliage, right? Uh, trees, ice. You know, um, and of course buildings. Uh, every time, uh, you know, um, you know, more, more infrastructure goes up. You know, it degrades your signal. So, uh, what I what I do want to do is um, I'll have some techs uh, take some signal readings in the mall. I would be curious to know. So, if if there is a problem with the state police system, uh, we'd like to know, right? You know, to see if um, if on paper it doesn't match what it should. So, you know, it shows you know mobiles outside do work. Uh, yeah, just to be clear, it's not yeah. necessarily inside the mall. It could be yeah. in the parking lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would expect so, <clears throat> yes. So, um, and I can leave some of these maps with you. So, uh, their, uh, you know, their coverage, um, you know, and I may have to explain. And probably would it be best if I emailed the maps to you guys, so you can, because you can actually zoom in a little better. And um, even though the the roads aren't named, you know, I did put the, you know, I, I marked the highlights where the mall is, where the office is, and where you know the different repeaters are. So um, the uh, uh, and I can you know explain the different colors, but as soon as I go to even uh, talk back with a portable, um, even outside the mall, there is um, like uh, so like say the mall's right here, uh, the white means no coverage. So there are spots more this way, closer to the town offices at the mall that show there it should not work. So it seems to get better as you hit a little bit uh, further down the line. Uh, so, um, which, you know, and, and you gotta, uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that when state police tried to go digital, that was a failure, right? They, and so typically when any user goes from analog to digital, um, when it, all goes bad, it's because their analog infrastructure, as it was, wasn't built up enough. So, and they already know, that's why they abandoned it. They know they need more transmitters, more repeaters, more infrastructure. So, you know, you're relying on one, on one site, although they do have receivers on like Mount Mansfield, which might help you when you get on, you know, more to the other side of town, uh, headed more west. Um, but so I'll, I'll leave the maps with Where you. Where is the state police? It's on Mill, Millstone Hill, right in the quarries. Okay. Yep. Um, and it's not, it's really, it's really not that high a tower, actually. Um, so, you know, they're at, they're at the top of that tower, but it's, it's still probably only, you know, 50, 60 feet in the air at the most. Um, you know, whereas, um, um, and, and I did do a comparison um, uh, on uh, Mount Irish. Uh, so Mount Irish does fix the mall. Um, it fixes all those issues, but you know we have that tower job to do. Uh, so to get that antenna up top, and the uh, so we're gonna you know 
make that a priority and just get it, get it done. And I'd be curious to know if the state police would be open to dispatching you on the new channel if if we get Irish built up. So now you have a, a site that actually works for you uh, or better, um, if they'd be open to it. I mean, they dispatch Northfield on their own channel. Uh, I, I may be wrong, but I talked to your texts, I think when they were installing that, and mm -hmm. they said obviously that would read Require them to have special equipment to be able to access that frequency. Well, it's just a just a radio, um, you know, just a, a little control station. So, for uh, for example, for Northfield, all it is is a it's a mobile radio hooked to their console. We maintain, you know, um, so we do all the after hours support for state police. So uh, we have access to all their sites and equipment. And, you know, they, they would let us go in and do that work. Uh, so it's not that. Um, you know, it, it would just be whether or not the dispatchers, you know, they'd have the dispatch supervisors would have to agree to say, okay, we can, uh, we'll dispatch you on that. Channel. So that, that would be the ultimate fix, right? Is that you get dispatched off of Irish. Um, is that a VHF or UHF? It's all UHF. It's all, it's all yeah. UHF, okay. Yep. Yeah. So um, the, uh, it's just a matter of, uh, um, you know, so I'll, I'll open up that dialogue with them. Okay. Uh, to see if they'd, they'd entertain it, and then then us fixing the antenna, which for the town crew and yourself would um, fix that issue, both handheld and uh, and mobile. So I'm thinking that's the way we need to go, and and perhaps if you know we can show state police that you know it's it, it's the infrastructure is just not covering for you guys. You know, uh, it sounds like you have an agreement in place for a few more years at least. Uh, which is pretty rare because there was a point when they were they were gonna they're trying kick, to get rid of it. They, were, they would kick yeah. everybody off. They, you know, <clears throat> their the whole plan was that they were when we're only gonna take care of state police and and um, and stop dispatching for local agencies and uh, both police and fire. So uh, I actually thought when Vince and I started the project that that was the plan, is that <clears throat> Irish was going to be your main site and that's how we built it around. And I, I found out after that you were st still going to continue to be dispatched <laughs> by state police um, uh, off of uh, Millstone Hill. And I, and I think it's because you, they're probably not charging you, um, no. right? Um, Another eight right. or nine years probably. Okay. Yeah. Question. Okay. Yep. Oh. So, uh, in its current state, would, would mobile repeaters cure it? Um, it would help, but it, it's only going to help as much as the mobile would work. So, because so, uh, what it does is it uses the, the vehicle's mobile. So, if you have, you know, I, I suspect you still have, even with the mobile, some coverage problems. Yes. Yeah. Um, but because the Mount Irish isn't built yet, you don't know how much that's going to help you with that. But so on the on the state police system, the answer is yes, it would help because now you're going from a low power handheld to a high power mobile. Right? Sure. So uh, so that would make a difference. Uh, the uh, but you know it's so an analog one. You know you're probably looking at with installation two thousand dollars a car. Uh, a digital ones can be four thousand dollars a car. Right, so uh, I, I would say it's worth first trying to build up the infrastructure, get uh, the Mount Hour site, um, get you up higher on the tower, get um, you know, just get the coverage fixed. Um, you know, and you know, so um, one one thing to point out is like right now. So you're sharing part of my antenna system because we have commercial users up there, you know, the bus companies, um, some fuel companies, you know, um, uh, that, that sort of thing around uh, around the county and actually around the state. <clears throat> so um, the antenna combining system that you're sharing is um, now, so you're sharing half of it because uh, the, uh, the frequencies, the public safety frequencies are really close together, or they're, they're closer um, to the transmitter one affects the receiver the other. So uh, for you to put you fully in the combiner, you'd be interfering actually with Washington County Sheriff. Uh, so that's why we need the, the other antenna up on the tower higher to separate. We, we have to do some antenna separation. Um, and so, you know, that antenna combiner that you're sharing um, I, I've been providing that at no charge, and I do 
So like I don't charge Northfield. Northfield PD has been up there for free for years. Um, uh, the sheriffs use the combiner and you guys now use the combiner or, or part of it. Um, so, um, you know, so we have full control of the antenna system and everything, the, uh, the site owner, I, you know, I pay $1,500 a month in rent, but, um, it's, you know, I do this all over the state for public safety, just so you know, I, I just, if someone, one of my customers needs to go in, I put them in my combiner and, and cause it doesn't cost me any extra. Uh, it's just um, so uh, you know but for this particular one I can't just fully put you in the combiner because of this pop, this interference issue so that that's that's why this antenna issue it become an issue it wasn't gonna originally that it wasn't gonna be an issue we discovered it later in the, in the planning uh, that it's like oh crap we got to put a, another antenna on the tower so uh, we're, we're working on it um, it's uh, it's a difficult tower to climb to work on. It's full of everything, cellular. Um, it's you know, it's it's a challenge, and um, just get, just getting equipment up there can be a challenge. So, um, but so but yeah, we're gonna uh, uh, we'll work on it. But I so my first step is I, I am gonna take some signal readings in the mall, uh, or just in that area, to see if it's not even performing the way it should be. Um, on paper, there are um, other um, other UHF repeaters also on Millstone Hill, um, Barry City, and Barry Town um, are also there. And I don't know if you guys scan them to monitor them to know if they sound clearer than state police. They seem pretty clear. Usually, when they're when they're broadcasting, they rarely have issues right. with it being static here or anything. Yeah, same same tower. So. So that I guess that that's that's very telling. So, so you know we can by comparison take readings from their, you know, off, off of their channel, um, and you know uh, get a reading. And if they, you know, if if they're coming in clearer than state police, which is at a better location on the tower, then perhaps we can get state police to look at the um, look at their system. So maybe something's degraded and they just don't know. Uh, because you know they're they're only using it when you know for for their mobiles and not their handhelds like you are. So, all right, all right. Good point. Mm -hmm. uh, and also because Northfield PD is up, up there on the tower, uh, you could even do some radio checks in the mall just to see how yours is going to perform. Um, if you know, I'm sure they wouldn't mind you just doing some. Radio checks. Key to like and not ask them anyways. Yeah, there you go. Yep. That is kind of I think someone's bugging them, right? Um, so you know, just uh, something to some some tests that you can do on your own. Okay. Right. How long has this been going on, Chief? When uh, you first noticed it? Probably three months or so. Two, three months. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's been just go first. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I just really appreciate you coming here and addressing this. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it was important. Um, I'm glad you invited me. Actually, uh, like I said, it's you know I, I only you know I hear what the guys tell me. You know they've done, and I you know the the kickoff went poorly because we did it at the exact same time state police went digital, right? So they, so here it is. We're we're putting in these brand new digital radios, mm -hmm. and in it it it's their infrastructure. Can, can handle it. You, you lose you lose a little bit of coverage as soon as you go to digital. It, it's when it's in good range, it's clear, right? Digital is nice and clear, but as soon as you get on the fringe and you guys are operating the fringe of the coverage area, so mm -hmm. it just all went bad. So, um, what's the state police plan for going back to digital? Uh, are they looking at it seriously? Or? Yeah, they're they there was an RFP out. They're looking for a uh, consultant. Um, and they're also looking for uh, a project manager. Well, I guess the consultant would be project manager, and then like they're looking for someone to to design the system. And and we know the the solution is going to have it's going to be more sites. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have um, so the uh, the city of Burlington. You know, is you know they have five voted receivers, and you know. Um, one transmitter at a, right in the center of town, the tallest building, and they're, they're, they don't have great coverage and they're building it out to uh, three sites simulcast. So they're gonna have three sites covering the whole city. 
um, the city of Lebanon we take care of, they built seven sites just to cover their city. Um, and, um, you know, so uh, we do town of Hanover police and, um, you know, they have nine sites simulcasted, but it's for also for more, a big chunk of the county too. They dispatch other agencies as well. But even for the city, there's like four or five sites all, you know, all hitting it. And you guys are stuck with one site down in this corner. Um, so it's, it really is, comes down to the infrastructure. So, um, so that's why once we get you on Mount Irish, um, and, and state police did reach out at one point if they could put a repeater on in our combiner on Mount Irish. So, uh, the, uh, so they know that they need that site as well. Um, it's just, uh, so I think the consult that, that could take years, right? Mm -hmm. Before they, before they build it out. I don't th I don't see them trying to go digital again for a while. No. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, I can. Um, so, would you want these on paper, or would you rather I just email these I to think you? you can email if you would be more yeah. to do. Okay. Yeah, because you can. Like I said, you can zoom in and see where they where they work and where they don't work. Um, and uh, and then you, uh, I, got, I, I made up some for non Irish as well. You can do the comparison. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Any. Anything else you wanted to address or that I missed? No? That's all I have. Okay. All right. I did want to talk to you about another issue. Oh, okay. Not, yep. as, not as pressing if we just. Yeah, we can just step through. We can, yeah, we can step through. Yeah. Okay. Let me just see if I, in my notes, I had anything jotted down real quick. Okay. Yep. Nope, we're good. Okay. All right, Thank we you did, for we your time. Thank you for explaining it to us. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you yep. all. Thank you. Thanks, Sergeant. It seems. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hold that on. Mr. Timson, where do you want to talk about the garage? That's what I was thinking. Let's move on to the improvements to the town garage. And Tim, would you like to come up and join us at the table, or if you'd like to discuss it from there, your choice. Okay, very well. I open the floor to you, Tim. So, what it was, was um, we discussed about the events that started this spring about uh, trying to reformat the garage a little bit for a more usable space space within the four walls that we have because it's kind of broke up funny. It has a wall in the center section and it kind of like gives us quite a bit of dead space on one side. So it was more along the lines of just to relocate the two heaters that are in there that are hung from the ceiling. They're on either side of the wall. We want to move them to the two corners to make the air move around and then remove uh, half of the wall because the other side of the wall is where the break room is. Um, and then uh, put a man door, which isn't so much of a have to do. It was more of an idea. We have cold storage on the back of the building. Mm -hmm. In order to get there, you gotta go outside. You go in the, <coughs> in the side of the cold storage. We have discussed about putting a man door so you can go from the garage into the cold storage. So we keep our tires and some other miscellaneous stuff. There was discussion of maybe moving some of the, the five gallon buckets of the hydraulic fluid and stuff that we use that we don't keep for storage or for supply, but not use every day. Uh, just kind of tidy up that side of the garage, give us a little bit more usable space. So we aren't shoot wanting everything into the garage. So we want to get a little bit more space. So maybe we have the garage improvement funds that we have used in a while. But it did go on, you know what I mean? We kind of got it to the back burner there when the, um, when the, the discussions were going on with bus companies. 
we're kind of waiting to see what the outcome of that was going to be. And then, and then the hotel stuff started, kind of waiting to see where that was going to go. And, you know, we're not getting any farther than we were when we started. And we're getting close to winter. And I was hoping to do so this stuff, you know what I mean? Do it before winter, and uh, you know, then blood kind of came in, and it kind of got again back burnered. So I had spoke with him last week to kind of refresh between the two of us on where we had left it, what we were going to do. Uh, we were going to talk to uh, Paul Phelps about moving, relocating the heaters, and doing some of that work, and the removal of the. You know, it's just some two by fours of plywood. It's stuff we can do. Outside of the what you could do, do you have an anticipated dollar figure in mind for the improvements you see? No, because we never really asked Bob for like kind of what he was going to do. Mean, what it would cost to be able, Well, Vince may have talked to him, but I didn't get a price on what. I was thinking it would cost to relocate the two meters. I was wondering if we'd need to go out for an RFP. Um, I have to feel that it'd be under 5,000. You do? Well, actually, we increased it to 10 last year. Yeah. So, last yeah, year. I, I would very, I'd be very surprised if it was much more than five. But I, I don't know what it costs to move heaters, but I. I would definitely look at different options if it was going to cost us $10,000 just to move those two. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. so. I think we ought to do a site visit. Mm -hmm. I would like a site visit. I was thinking about that when you were describing it. I was taking notes because I've never been there. So I would I would like to see it and have you describe it to us, all of us as a board. I think that would be a real good thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for addressing that, Tim. Any other questions for Tim while we're on the topic? No. 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 But if we were to do such a project, do we do we have funds that are set aside for building? We have five thousand in the energy. Yeah. Okay. I got that should. Unless it's been going away, there's the energy deal and. I guess there's, there's a lot of stuff that hasn't happened over there in, in the years. I mean, okay. I don't know when it happened. The garage stores have been back okay. into the large maintenance utilities that got 20,000. Maybe that's it. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Maintenance. Yeah. It's all one. Like, like I said, I got 20 in that, I got five in the garage. Energy improvements. Is there water out there? I'm not sure. Is there water out there? Mm -hmm. Water. Any water? Like bottled water? Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Here? I think in the there might be clerk's some. office. I don't know if there's any in the closet or not. There might be some in okay. this closet to the radio. Okay. So yeah, there's been there's been some discussions over the last few years of maintenance, but it's always been wait and see what happens with the next you know thing, the hotel, mm -hmm. the bus company. You know what I mean? There's no there's no insulation in the walls. Over. Mm -hmm. And I can see your point. Ideally, you'd like to have it done prior to winter, and winter's fast approaching. Well, you know what I mean? We're just mainly looking to move the wall and, take, and relocate the heaters for now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. we're trying to do for this year. Okay, good to know. Um, but, like, so it'd be like a two stage or a three stage well, project. Well, it's all about, you know what I mean, with the planning oh, we or the. It's not I don't remember the, the board. That Diane's on that we all met with and 
wants and needs. Mm -hmm. We're compartments between whether we're going to stay here or we're going to go on the Coops Trail. I mean, that's another discussion. I don't hold on, but like I said, the insulation has all fallen. I mean, that building is just a steel building, steel uprights, and it's got every two feet, it's got a two by six. It goes from one steel beam to the other steel beam, and that's what holds the inside and the outside together. We had to do some repairs to the tin on the other side of the building two, two years ago, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And like all the insulation was falling down, so like it's just there's no insulation in the wall. So it's like, where do you start? Where do you end? Right. So you can work with Tour and set up a site visit for us? That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. And thanks for addressing that with us. Okay, and now we'll move on to the treasurer's report and the budget status report. I think you all have budgeted. Okay, so um, just to, you know, this is as of today. Okay. Uh, this includes the uh, vendor payments that we made today and first payroll of September. So in the first part of it, as far as the revenues go under the state of Vermont, um, what the state has done to help us because of the flood is they have made three payments on the Vermont Highway Summer and Vermont Highway Winter roads. Uh, normally we only have one this time of year, but they've made three in all, just to help everybody. In. So that gives us a little more cash, That's which helped towards the flood. Okay, so that part of it is very thankful for that. Um, <coughs> then down under property taxes, I still don't have what the state education tax rate is going to be yet. So if you look under budget, we have like four million, and if you look under actual, it's 11 million, well, I haven't pulled out the uh, the education part of it, and from what I understand, that's finally been calculated as of last week, but I just don't have that information. Okay. So I'll be pulling that out, so that will make more sense after that. Uh, pilot revenue, I've only got one more item to go into pilot revenue. That's Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I've sent them a bill for 75000 So we will be over projection as far as revenue, which is very good, as long as Blue Cross Blue Shield pays us. All the other pilots have paid us for the year. Uh, let's see. I think that most of the other things in revenue, there's nothing really that's new in there or changed. Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape for that. Now under expenditures, under general government, um, you know, with the exception of the flood, we're in good shape. Okay, we haven't spent a whole lot of money. Uh, obviously, we haven't done projects that we would have because we have the flood. So that part doesn't help. Um, but if you look at the expenses, they are all in line, the payrolls are in line, as far as the general government. I don't see anything that's out of line. In records restoration, we spent $2,200, and that's because we changed the vault lock. So now we have a lock that's working, and everyone has, well, not everyone, but everyone in the office can open it without issues. And right. that's really, really important. That is so important. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, I'm hoping that'll be the expenses for the record restoration for the year, but I'm not certain. And a lot of it, I don't think we're going to be getting too much more uh, in that expenditure because everything's being digitized. And so we will not be replacing books as much as we have in the past as far as the books that are, um, that people look through for uh, real estate and the attorneys are looking through. Everything is going to, well, at least 40 years will be digitized. That should take care of most of our books. And then we will have the ability to go back in even further. From what I understand from the town clerk, um, that project has not been completed yet. The project was completed as far as them coming in and scanning all the documents. Now they are back at the office and they're putting them in the correct formats so that they can go online. I believe there's some online, but not all of them yet. Not so we're hoping, yeah, within the next month that will happen. That's great. Yeah. So I'm, you know, we're looking forward to that. Uh, the assessing department, there's nothing new on that. They've, you know, had to have more supplies. Um, I think they had a printer that went, uh, so they went a little bit over budget on that so far. I'm not anticipating any other issues with that for the time being. We got our bill for the tax maps, and that was lower than we anticipated, so that part is really good. Uh, meetings and elections, we obviously have not had any yet. For uh, FY24, we will have uh, the special meeting in November. That will be in there, but also we'll have the budget um, 
with I should say the annual report in March. Those are the only two that I'm aware of for FY24 that will be happening. Uh, the insurances they're all on you know they're all in line. Nothing that's out of the ordinary on that one. Um, zoning has had almost no expense so far. DRB not not very much expense, but they also have not had that many meetings. Uh, the planning commission, you know, that's all pretty much you know, what we're expecting at this point in time. And other boards and commissions, the only expenditure we've had so far is the recreation board, and that's been minimal. Cemeteries, um, the mowings are almost done for the year. We will have mowings. We paid through September right now, so we'll probably have another month for cemetery mowings. Uh, taxes and assessments, we call, we pay the county fees in full right now. We have not received a bill from Barrytown as far as the ambulance service goes. Uh, I am anticipating that should be happening anytime. Either that or I will be giving them Absolutely. a call and asking them. Right. We should have something by now. Okay, but we do have a contract, so I know it's going to be, but we book things as we can. Mm -hmm. And then moving forward um, onto town offices. I don't have anything that's out of whack there. Uh, and the general expenses, I'm not seeing anything out of whack there. And police expenses, I um, know the only thing as normal is the wages for the police overtime are over budget already. Uh, but we still, once again, we have two people in the right. police department that are out. Absolutely. Yeah. So that tends to happen to us, unfortunately, more often than we like. Otherwise than that, I'm not seeing anything else that's under the Okay, and then... Question on the police. Excuse me? Question for the, on the police department. Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, so, Hilltop, do we, we submit a bill, and they pay it. Where does that go? That goes in the revenues. revenues. And that is on, let's see, the very first page, if you look at the very bottom line, police, other revenues, $6,700. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and I have not billed them yet. For the month of August, I haven't had that information yet. So once I get that, okay. so moving on to summer highway roads, um, the thing we're building right now is we get to get some culvert materials that we put under inventory. But from what I understand from Tim, we've got the inventory now, but we may have to pull that out of inventory to put for, you know, for the flood. But we did not want to put it into the flood unless we've actually expended in the flood. So there will be some accounts like that, that may be, um, uh, for instance, there could be gravel or whatever. It's probably going to be an inventory item, but as we use it, it will come out of that inventory item and go into the flood expense. Um, and that's where you come into that flood damage. So, so far, we've billed $658,000. Only well, that's what we have in flood, flood expenditures, except for that does not include um, the payroll because I get that separated. Right. Now, when I go through FEMA, I will be including the payroll, right. I'll be part of it, but just so that everything matches in our records, and it's not, and I don't have three different payroll accounts, which would be very difficult to maintain, I put it there. So the flood account only has the actual vendor expenditures that we, that we had. So that includes um, the materials, that includes the hauling, that includes the culverts that we've used so far, uh, and uh, any uh, subcontractors that we hired out. Mm -hmm. to. Okay. Um, the winter expense, obviously, that's you know forthcoming. Uh, we are starting to build our inventories as far as gravel. We did have a very good inventory left over from the previous year. We've also got money in the reserves the previous year, so we're in good shape as far as the materials go for that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Highway General. I don't see anything that's out of whack there. Okay, and highway other, I don't see anything that's out of whack there. And capital expenditures, we have not really spent anything yet. I believe we have a police vehicle that says it's in, but we haven't been billed for it yet. We haven't received it yet. But I've been told that we can go pick it up, but it's, that's just not happening right no, now. No. Okay. But, you know, we have it on, you know, good word that we're going to be having that soon. And then I know that we're waiting for the truck for the highway department. They said that's ready, but we still haven't seen that yet either. Okay, so that's all we've got on those. And otherwise, we have appropriations and 
I've been paying this as we've been receiving the invoices from them. So that's what I've got on the budget status report. If you've got questions, please just let me know. It's great information. Really enjoy that you go through it with us and help explain it. Any questions from the board for Diane? No. Any questions from anyone here tonight on it as well? If not, we'll move on. But thank you so much, Diane. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on now to the select board appointment of the fire department merger and steering committee for the two remaining members. Uh, I've talked to Pete Kelly and Joe, I believe you have as well. He's expressed an interest in serving on the committee. And are you going to vote on that? Or do you abstain? Vote on Pete? Yeah. Or do you abstain? I can vote on that. Okay. Um, and then the select board member, I would recommend Flo. So I move that we appoint Pete Kelly and Florence Smith to the committee. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. So we have a full committee now. We can move forward. That's wonderful. Thank you all. Now we'll go on to discuss the Lovers Lane Bridge, the local and regional input questionnaire. Tour, can you go over that with us? Uh, this is a questionnaire we received from the Regional Planning Commission uh, looking at the Lovers Lane Bridge, which has been closed for several years now. Um, there are several sections. I've also sent this to the Planning Commission. They're reviewing it. They're reviewing it. Um, I think I mean, a lot of these is not applicable since it is closed. Uh, but I think if you go down to design configuration, starting at the bottom of page two, um, you know, alignment issues with the current bridge, well, it's you know, on a tight curve with a tight bend in the river. So I really don't know if there's much they can do as far as the alignment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, with the existing bridge, it's you know, very narrow to one lane bridge. Um, but I don't know if there are. So who's going to fill out the questionnaire? I will if you give me information for it. Okay. I didn't know if this was going to another committee. Okay. No, if they feed me, I'll fill it out with the inputs I get from everybody else. I would request a motion to appoint to our to fill out this questionnaire. It's extensive and it's good information they're asking and it's pertinent to moving forward this process. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Tour. Okay, and now we'll move on to the approval of the November special town meeting for bond vote, the warning and the notice. So, uh, as we talked about, there are five uh, articles that we'll be voting on. Does anybody have a copy of the document that does not say draft on it? I just have no. the draft. Draft. Hmm. Yep. Okay. So uh, to move forward on the November vote uh, that we have scheduled, uh, Tom Clerk is asking that this be approved. The uh, warning is included as well as the uh, ballot and a uh, mailer postcards included. So I recommend yeah. approval of this. I make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
And now I do need signatures on that, but without the original, I don't know. Perhaps we can That's locate it after it might have gotten yeah. filtered into one of the other folders. We can look for that after. And now discussion on the capital budget planning. Uh, let's hold off on that. Okay. For the moment. Okay. Could I see approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications for the payrolls and the warrants? Oh, there you go. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Thank you, Joe. Uh, make motion to pay warrant 24G06 with checks 23344 to 23376 for the payable amount of $111,912.31. Reconciled August bank statement for general general fund sewer water and checking accounts. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Ah. Wonderful. Thank you, Tim. Uh, That's great. Now we'll go to the approval of the minutes for 9-11-23. So we won't be able to approve those because... I wasn't present. Wasn't here. So we will postpone that to the next select board meeting. And then amendment and reapproval of previously approved minutes from June 5th of 23. I just made one small change to that and let me see. Yep, everybody was here. Um, so that is under the discussion of the uh, police department body cams. Just added uh, one sentence there to the motion that um, stating that it was the only uh, contractor yeah. um, for that purchase mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. put it in line with our uh, purchasing policy. So I recommend, or I'll make that motion that we re-adopt those minutes with that noted change. Do I hear second. a second? Second. Wonderful. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay, is there anything on the agenda that you wanted us to discuss tour that we haven't thus far? Nope. Okay, I'll what open we... it up for board round table. <clears throat> Joe, do you have anything this evening you'd like to discuss? So, Thomas Cassavant, is this something that we we're gonna? I don't think, have you had a look, chance to look at that right away permit yet? I doubt no, it's so we'll hold that off to the next hold meeting. Hold it to okay. the next meeting, I recommend that. And also, we were going to discuss capital budget planning, or did we want to postpone? We'll hold that off until another meeting. Next meeting. Yeah. Okay. So we will hold off the capital budget planning till the next meeting, as well as the permit that we have here from Thomas Cassavant. We'll do that at a future board meeting as well. So now, with the board roundtable, Joe, would you like to discuss anything this evening? No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. And tour? I'm good. Okay. Very good. And are we expecting an executive session? Yes. I move that we enter into our executive session for personnel regarding treasurer hiring in accordance with 1 VSA 313A3. Do I hear a second? Second. Do we want to take a break? I don't see. Do you need a break? Uh, well, yeah, I'll take a minute for him to break down. That sounds wonderful. Right. Thank you very okay. much. Good night. Night, Tim. Thanks. Thanks.